Hello everybody. I know it has again been a while since my last post and the reason why I put this one up is twofold. First, many have asked how I was, if I'm alright and why I stopped posting Blender and Modo videos. Well, the first part is easy, I'm fine and I'm not planning to change this in the near future. Second part is not so easy. I stopped posting because uh, I, I just didn't feel like it anymore. You know, it has eaten away a lot of my time and although I, I like you really, I like your comments and feedback a lot. I lost a bit the interest and after having done this for quite a few years, you know, sometimes it's good as it is and it's time to let go and do something else. That's how it is and I don't know if this will change again. But now I thought it is time to say hello and uh, I also want to introduce something completely different to you, something you don't know from me. You know, I have been into games as long as home and later uh, uh, personal computers, PC existed. Computer games have always interested me and have been one of the main reasons why I got so interested in 3D applications which later resulted in the clips I did for Modo and Blender. I still do them, and uh, but I do it just in my leisure and just for myself, without any pressure and enjoying the fact that I can construct everything which I cannot afford in real life. My uh, interests in games has not changed until today. Just my eyes and my eye to finger reflexes and coordination have a bit suffered in the many years I am already on this uh, planet. In that context, I mean looking for little helpers to compensate for my slower reflexes. I stumbled over a video of an extremely talented young programmer. His name is uh, Shin Sponova. I hope I pronounce this uh, halfway properly. He has written and released a super fast and easy to use image scan library which is available for free and covers pretty much everything you need when you are into game or other automation. Okay, here is a, a list let me open it of all the functions which his class has and um, you can stop the video here and have a look at it yourself but I think you can pretty much do everything you can imagine and uh, there is also another video available on Shin's uh, YouTube channel. The list is in uh, the link is in in the description of the video. And most, if not all, of these functions here have uh, a tolerance. So it means if you are looking for an image or a color or whatsoever, a pixel, then 
it also finds it when it does not 100% fit the color. I have just made a very quick picture to show you how this works. We have three colors, red, blue and green. Every one of these colors occupies uh, one byte. So 256 times 256 times 256 is the number of colors we currently can have. And if you have a variation in it, it means each of the colors. Red can have a variation of 10 plus and minus. Blue can have a variation or green can have a variation. That is very handy if you are, if sometimes uh, the color changes a bit. Okay, let's go on. Now, Shin wrote this uh, image class for AutoHotKey. AutoHotKey is an open source scripting language and an automation package for Windows. I'm pretty certain it does not exist for any other environment. By the way, the links of all this and for all the downloads and credits are in the description. Everything is free and easily available. Now I thought I pull all that stuff together in a bit, in two scripts of mine, which uh, of course can also be downloaded and are free as well. Um, I don't think they are perfect yet, but they work, at least for me. Okay, for all these scripts to function, I use several different uh, software. One, of course, is AutoHotKey, the scripting language. Then I use GreenShot, which is a screen grabber software. Uh, some of you may know it already. Of course, I use Shin's image scan class as the main workhorse. And uh, the editor I use to write my scripts, uh, my AutoHotKey scripts, is a site, site for AutoHotKey, and this is a scintilla-based editor with a very strong syntax support and also excellent debugging tools. Is it the best? I don't know. And there are a number of others like AHK Studio, Notepad++, Visual Studio. I think it's a personal preference. But before I continue, I want to do a little discourse back in my 43 years of information technology background. You know, the urge for automation or to get at data for a specific need, uh, but from totally different applications. That's probably as old as the computer industry and probably much older than many of you who listen to this uh, YouTube video. Before I continue, I have made a very small presentation, don't worry. And I just want to make a point. You know, everything started in 1983. The first time that a dumb green terminal was together in the same housing as a personal computer, which meant the PC could access this host terminal, the green screen with, uh, I don't know, I believe they had 32 lines with uh, 40 characters each. And you see here, um, 
they weren't very fast. 4.7 megahertz. Today it's uh, mine has 4.3 gigahertz. The memory was 256 kilobytes to uh, a maximum of 640 and even Bill Gates at that time said no one on in the world needs more than 640 kilobytes. Today you can't even make a comment statement in a modern software without using 640k. Anyway, this thing had an API which means a programming interface to access the contents of the host screen. And the API was unfortunately a machine code, which means assembler, and that has put off a lot of people. But it has not put off me. It made programmed operators possible and automation was born. By the way, I still own such a PC uh, and it's faster, at least when it boots, than my super duper water cooled current system I have. Uh, by the way, mainframes used to be water cooled and today's PCs can do a lot more than uh, mainframes could at that time. But that's another story. Anyway, let's see the next slide here. A few ye years later, the future started because IBM announced the first uh, terminal which could display colors green, red, blue and white. If you mix all three together, you uh, may recognize this RGB. It's some standard which today still exists. But the difference is at that time it had, it was enough to have two bits. Zero, zero was green. 0 1 was red, 1 0 was blue and 1 1 was white. Today we have 16 million as standard. We could uh, use 4.3 billion colors in the architecture which exists already and that is far far away from what our eyes could recognize. I have an, uh, a 4K display. It has uh, 3840 times 2160 pixels, and that's a lot of information which you must compare. And the typical game, we will have a look at that later on. Uh, like Lost Ark needs uh, 75 gigabyte of disk space. By the way, that is more than the largest Swiss bank had available in total at that time. And that's one of the reasons. There are others, but that's one of them that computers today are not really faster than back in the 80s. They uh, just look fancier, they blink, but they are incredibly inefficient programmed and the operating systems, well, that's another story again. But I would like to come back to automation and some of the rules have not changed since the very beginning. When, when I wrote my first screen scraper software, then I just had to uh, make sure that the bottom right character of the screen had appeared in the screen buffer and then I knew that the screen buffer was full and I could use this information. This is far gone. 
This is not possible today and I will show you some examples. The second best part is to find some information on the screen and react on it. By the way, uh, the best thing is when you can send a keystroke because this will be buffered by the operating system. That's still true today and it will be passed to the application. Any other thing you don't, you're not sure what happens with it. You can guess and hope and wait, but you're not sure that the expected result will also appear. Believe me, there are a ton of shoot yourself in the foot possibilities. Trust me, you will find out when you start using software or things like this. Uh, the second best is, as I said, we check for information. That's the main thing we do today. And this can result in very ugly timing problems. And the last and the least good one is uh, something I call shoot the moon procedure. We send a click and we hope something is done with that click. In the game it's okay to define a path, but still it's not as easy as we might think on the first glimpse. It's only okay if nothing is in the way. No obstacles, no non-player characters and no other players. Okay, let's continue and have a look at uh, the first script, which is um, this one here, edit. You can't see it, I have it on my second screen. It's called grab image and I go very quickly through it. On the top you see some housekeeping, uh, some temporary files, which I define the only thing which you have to make sure is that this directory exists. In my case it's D screenshots. The demo is just a subject, you could also here write for Uncle Alfred, doesn't matter. It's or for uh, the name of a game or whatsoever, something to remind you what this screen sheet, uh, <laughs> screenshot is all about. Okay, now I have several hotkeys in it, that's why the script is called Auto Hotkey. And my hotkeys all start with shift, control and some action. I have shift, control and left mouse click. This will record a mouse click and write a corresponding statement for it. Then I have shift, control and Z or C. I don't know how you differentiate between C and Z, if you say C for both, anyway. And uh, I took Z because it's the last letter in the alphabet and it means there are no more other letters and this is why it terminates the script. It does again some cleanup if necessary and the main routine is when we hit uh, shift, control and the letter P. The first thing is I send a control print screen and this starts my green screen software and I would just quickly show you something because that's also uh, something you have to do, otherwise the script will not work. And the thing is here, 
in the uh, destination tab you must activate this thing here so the save as dialog is displayed you can activate whatever else you think is necessary but this one must be so i get the chance to give the screen capture a new name okay then i do uh, some calculations some debugging messages which are being written on the console some uh, timing routines here which are interesting to have activated at the beginning you can turn that off by specifying uh, show capture times equals zero then it doesn't show it to you and finally i will write into an output file and this output file statements you can take one by one into your uh, second script and it will do what you have recorded you can say you could have put both in the same yes that's true i probably will do this later for me but i wanted to let you have some fun with it also okay let's start that script by uh, hitting f5 in here you see it says script is running and i will go to a, a web application straight away otherwise this uh, this video will take too long i can show you things there and the place where i go is i go to the web page of someone i very very much admire in almost any respect she is an excellent piano player boogie woogie and blues she uh, is uh, very charming she's an excellent composer and singer and she had the honor to play the opening of jerry lee lewis 80th birthday in the london palladium and i think that's quite that's quite an honor okay as i said and you may remember the best thing you can do is you send the key and you will see later in the second script script this is what we do i go to ladiva ladiva.com by the way this is her uh, artist name her real name is Vanessa Kenagi which is a very Swiss name <laughs> okay let's go there and watch how this screen is activated nothing in just watching the bottom of the screen the second thing is depending on how you left this the last time it may come up like this or like this or you have no chance to know this so there is no point in activating or recording a screen click we could go to full screen here but remember the best thing is to send a key and another thing is if you look for something you see there are subtle differences the title bar changes color for example depending on if this window is active or not so be aware of that if you send an f11 here it will not work it will work here so f11 and here again you see this part here it's german it says to uh, go out of full screen mode you have to uh, you have to hit f11 again okay now let's uh, go on and now i 
press Shift, Control and P as the first key. This comes up, then you know it works. And here again, there are some interesting things. For example, look at the background here. That's all the same color. If I go up to here and, and select this area here inclusive, the black pixels above, it will work. But it is a hard thing to do to find this image when you have to look at the full screen because you first need to find an anchor point. If the anchor point is the same color as all the other colors, it will take longer. So what you can do to diminish this is make sure you take something which contains a non-black color. So you see, it has found it in the image in 94 milliseconds and where we specified the region in 42.7 milliseconds, which is pretty fast. So the first script always does check if it finds what you have selected. And if you later on don't find this image, then trust me, it's your fault. You have shot yourself in the foot and you will see this will happen a lot. May it only be because a window has covered what you are looking for or whatsoever. Okay, now another thing is my script always checks what you have been looking for, then it calculates the midpoint of it and sends a click. So if you record it, you must send the click yourself. We go to videos and now you see there are a lot of videos available and I tried uh, to record it and turn down the volume, but somehow I didn't manage. As long as these videos do not run, we will find an image. We will not find it when it's red. But if I press Shift, Control, P again, now it will not turn red and we can go and capture this play button and because the play button again is uh, you know we have several play buttons but it's all half transparent backgrounds that's another thing which gets you we have uh, four or six different play buttons here but none of them is the same because you see we have transparent backgrounds and this is the same when this video plays here. You know, we have uh, a 30 second sample so you know what you miss when you don't listen to her. Now let's go back and see what we can do with these clicks. I close this here and I said we have written uh, some statements into a directory. The directory is the, the same directory as your script was launched from. And because we launched uh, the script 
from the desktop it's here come and I can just copy these statements if we would have recorded some clicks they would also be in here and this can be as many of these clicks or uh, or uh, screen images as you like and remember it will always click in the middle of the area you have selected so don't make it too big okay i copy this control copy then close the notepad and open my second script and you see here we have um, Ah, wrong one. Sorry. It's here. And it says in the comments, put your screen grab statements in here. That's what we do now. Control V and save. Control S, F5 and let's see what happens. So far, so good. And it has worked. And I was very happy that I didn't shoot myself in the foot because you see, when the curse by accident would have been here, it would not have worked. So. I think I will stop the video here and make a second part with the game uh, considerations because otherwise this takes way way too long. I think it's way too long already and I have never ever asked for that but I found out that it seems really important to get some likes in YouTube. YouTube wrote to me and stated that I am a, a total underperformer compared to others. So if you liked this first part, give me a thumbs up. It's just a click. Share the video if you think it is useful for someone else. Thank you all. Take care and have fun and see you for the second part. Bye bye now.